All right, guys, we are back once again this evening with Pride Start Gaming versus Fight Walkers. We'll be kicking things off very shortly, so sit on tight while uh, everyone gets ready. So, this is, I believe, the second match or maybe third match for White Walkers ever in NGS. And they put up a pretty good showing the last time. They weren't able to walk away with you know the win, but they still showed they have what it takes to make it in the heroic division, I believe. And it'll just be, you know, a bit of a learning curve for them as time goes on. So we are now heading on into the draft. So sit on tight while we hop on over. We do have uh, the giant naming uh, issue. <laughs> Unfortunately, only way to correct that is a shorting it. I'm gonna shut it. There we go. Pride Stark and White Walkers. Everyone knows you're gaming, guys. Everyone knows. <laughs> So we got Pride Star Gaming and White Walkers. Well, we haven't seen Pride Star this season, but a lot of the players on this team have been around on other teams. So they're not unfamiliar with NGS, and many of those players played at the Heroic Division before. Uh, we got Richard Gear, Hollis, both familiar names, Tithel Skigum. We'll see, uh, we'll see how they do though. And we're going to kick things off with the Urel and Raynor. Nothing, nothing too shabby with those bands. Genji getting banned out as well, which is always a solid band. So nonetheless, we're going to probably see Decker Kane. We might even see the new Stukov, uh, Alex Straza. You can't use White Main at the moment, so won't be able to see her. And Garage will be banned out for Pride Stark. <laughs> now, You can pick up heroes like Dahaka, Blaze. You want to get some solo landing. You can pick up Deckard. I, uh, they're going to pick up the Asmodan, who is very solid on this map in general, especially how the map works, especially Objective A, where there's a relatively small area. So if a team fight breaks out, it's easy to dunk on the enemy team. So. We'll see how it plays out for White Walkers because this is a very early time to pick up Asmodan, although he is a little bit contested. But out the door, we're going to get that Darker Kane and Dahaka. Going to get a very strong first pick, or sorry, I guess second picks. Get a great support, if not arguably uh, the best support in the game at the moment, and Dahaka for the global, which will help offset Asmodan's ability to push the lane while the objective is up as Asmodan has to deal lane that's opposite to Dahaka and technically Dahaka could always burrow on up. And we're going to get Alex Straza and Johanna here. So Alex Straza paired with an Asmodan and a Johanna is really, really good, largely because they're both high HP pool heroes. So trying to kill the Asmodan is probably not going to happen, especially with, with uh, the Lifebinder. So They've kind of gotten in a small a small trifecta. The uh, they do know and they have seen a let's play Alarak. So the ban is a targeted ban, and it makes a lot of sense, especially when the core of the team's essentially been made up. You have a solo laner that they could ban, and that is going to be the Alarak. Sonya is likely to be the choice here because we did see a let's play. Sonia as well on uh, on Colonel Shrines, I believe. So 
even though they banned it, I, I don't think it's going to be uh, very fruitful. But nonetheless, like I can understand the reasoning there. You feel more confident playing potentially against Sonya than you do against like a wild card of Alarath. There we go. Fixing. Uh, and so the Diablo ban, pretty solid ban as well. Now, wall banking is a little bit harder in a lot of cases here. And like I said, Alets does play Sonya. And so I expected that as much. The Jaina is an interesting choice, but Keldas does have the better range to pick on Jaina. Now, I'm not sure how I feel about the Jaina only because of the fact that Meridian can get in on her. If she gets rooted in place by Deckard, Dehaka, the CC combo on her, there's four people with CCs available. And we're gonna get a we're gonna get the cavalry coming on in. And Tracer not gonna get any, you know, Tassadar shields, but she'll still be coming in hot. And there's nice juicy Jaina to jump on. However, she will have to deal with the blinds and Alex Straza, however, won't be able to do too much against Tracer. So we'll see how this works out for him. But I'm expecting the Tracer to bully the snot out of Jaina. If the Tracer just goes unimpeded, then the Pride is going to roll up with a victory here. So overall, I like both of the team's drafts. I like Pride Start Gaming's probably more. They have a global. They have best support, arguably. They have wave clear from Kael'thas. And then they have the ability to dive on in between Muradin and Tracer. But I'm not thinking they're weak at all by any chance with Asmodin able to dunk on them. Well, I don't think Deckard's going to be able to keep up very well with Dunks. That's kind of the trade-off. Deckard will keep a single target alive very well with how much healing output he can he can do with each of those potions. But he's not really going to keep an entire team alive from a Dunk. So we're going to be getting on in this hizzy full shizzy. So let's let's get this ready. I do need to actually update Ali OBS. I forgot about that. But... No harm, no foul. We're back in here. And we got Richard Gear on the Decker Kane and Tithel on the Dehaka. We got French on the Kael'thas, Skigum on the Tracer, and Hollis on the Muradin. On the other side, we have Peter on the Johanna, Jurassic on the Jaina, Aletz on the Sonia, Asterix on Alex Straza, and finally... We got Claws on the Asmodin. And that's going to be White Walkers and Bright Stark Gaming. I can't actually unpause, by the way, or type in chat. Apparently, I don't know if they fixed this or hot, hot patched it. But, uh, ooh. It's uh, definitely, definitely has not been fixed at this point. Or, well, I think it hasn't hasn't been fixed, at least. So uh, let me just check. Now. Now. The way this has to work, I feel, for Light Walkers is that they're going to have to get really good bursts onto Tracer before she recalls out in order to secure the kill on her. Otherwise, she'll just queue away. You need a dunk, a blow up from Jaina, and lockdown from Johanna because they're a very CC light team overall. You have Johanna with the stun condemn pull. You have the Blessed Shield. You also have, on top of that, the, the Sonya Spear. So... A small segment of or small slice of abilities to do some CC on the other side there's four CC's available which is obviously four is more than two 
uh, we can all basically do some, some basic basic math there. So if four is greater than two, it's gonna be a lot harder for them to actually lay down their CC as well because they'll be CC'd before and potentially after their their window of opportunity exists for them to kill someone. Now, if they can get Asmodin with solid value out of his trait of basically getting his demon lieutenant across the map that can open up the game for him if they they don't hold the game relatively even it's just going to snowball really quickly because they're kind of dealing with as what they needs to stack well how do you beat someone who needs to stack and beat them mid and early game you can beat them mid and early game you can potentially close it out be before they are able to actually accomplish anything. Now, Jaina is going to have to play very, very smart, largely because of the fact that, like I said, there's a Tracer, there's a Muradin. If she gets locked down from uh, Deckard Kane and or Kilthas, and or Dahaka. All of those are opportunities to just obliterate her from the game. Now, come ice block, if they make it to the ice block stage, things will be a little smoother for Jaina. And the life binder will probably be able to keep her up if they don't literally send her back to World of Warcraft and remove her from this game. But... I'm not quite sure if they'll reach the point where the ice block will be enough. Additionally, like I said, they do have good wave clear. If they're planning to have Johanna help clear for Asmodin, kind of like the classic Taste for Blood, they'll stack him significantly faster. And obviously there's the mid and top lane, which are relatively close in your normal rotation for your four man. And so they can get basically twice as many waves, the combination of the two of them, since it's one and a half seconds. And Asmodin picked up a uh, wrath here. So he'll basically want those waves to help him get into the mid to late game. All right, so unfortunately, I didn't see any chat. Um, <laughs> you can verify that I have no chat on my screen. We're going to leave it at that. All right, so we're going to get the traditional footsie battle happening. A lot of damage being dished out across the place. Alette's getting caught in the flame strike and gravity laps. Going to take a chunk, but overall still looking pretty good. Now, they are going to have to get out. But the spear to Muradin's face is enough to do him in. His beard is not thick enough to keep him from surviving that. So, very aggressive early game out of both teams. And that's, that's a nice early game kill. It's not going to do too much because Muradin is effectively no wave clear. You might as well just have, you know... A training dummy sitting in the lane because he's not going to clear that out pretty much at all in the meantime they get themselves a very very minor minor xp lead and let's down in the solo and very nicely done by all right start gaming to get the macro pressure on you'll see uh let's is actually rotating over right now but this is a really nice rotation from right start they know they haven't taken it and at this point they have the opportunity to invade which they're doing right now and this is a very ballsy uh 
they don't know where multiple members are. The collapse is coming on in close with Peter. Astor is coming in from the back. This is a bad position for him. Only hitting Kelthos. The drag off the point. Hollis still sitting on there, but he's taking a lot of damage and he will have to hop away. Claws getting stunned. Skigum, no bomb ready to go and they will walk on out. They do pick up that turret in the meantime and a lot of resources spent by both teams to protect and or take that turret. So I really like that aggression that they just showed on the side of Pride Start Gaming. It's, it's one thing to macro to take your own camps. It's another thing entirely to macro to steal your opponent's camps. And you can see that it didn't pay off for them. And at the same time, White Walkers didn't choose to macro to go and do the actual turrets they went to macro to get the siege camp and then had a let starting there and so they were able to respond really quickly and really easily a lot of damage onto peter he does get the iron skin and he does have the conviction to get on out uh, but he's going to actually he's going to dodge on the roof but the bomb is on peter he won't have iron skin available and say goodbye to saint peter he will be rem remembered and the pope will say some blessings for him Now, Point is in control by White Walkers. This is one of the things that's both a blessing and curse on this map. If you get on the point, it doesn't matter if your opponent does. As long as you sit on that point, you will continue taking up and it will go into overtime. At which point you need to force the opponent off of there. And they should be able to, but this is going to be hard fought as we saw earlier with the team fights have so far actually gone in favor uh, let's get him pulled on in peter going on in with that conviction we get the root not going to accomplish much and there comes the big old tailing with asterisk popping the dragon at this point dra fighting it through the dragon is absolutely crazy we get the root onto two not going to actually matter overtime is on the table right now and white walkers are trying to knock it off as they want this objective. Jurassic gonna get caught. Three man root actually from Decker Kane. Very nicely done. Oh, big bomb from above from Claws a drop in them. And soon enough, we're gonna get some nice Dunkin' Donuts. The Haka going down. And the extinction event has already started. White Walkers coming out swinging. I didn't expect him to do this hot early game, especially with. And Asmodin, who hasn't stacked, he's only at 90 globes. So we're looking at a game that's so far been rather favorable for White Walkers. I didn't expect him to take so long to actually fight for the objective, particularly against an Alex Straza. Alex Straza is just, you know, great on... Well, Sky, she pops a dragon and you either fight on it or you leave. And if you stay to fight, they pretty much win. And that's exactly what happened there. They tore through them and were able to make things happen. In the meantime, we got Sonia continuing to push in the lanes. We got Bottom getting shoved on in. French taking a lot of damage. Jurassic in a bad position. Not going to actually matter too much. Gigam dropping some autos on in there. And they will just try to take down this fort. Oh, Jurassic executing with the Frostbolt. Say goodbye to Skigum. And we hardly knew you. French getting uh, pumped up with some mace in the face. As Peter does not have anything to worry about there. Now... Tithel just soaking things on up. We got turrets being picked on up now as well. No one going for the support camp. And finally, we got Pirate Sark picking up their own. Very nice positioning from Hollis. Please remember as a tank that your job if is to also keep vision. Tithel getting collapsed on. Nice damage, nice collapse from White Walkers. They force him to burn 
the essence and that's a win overall skigum though coming on in deep getting onto the booty of jaina but uh, let's land in the spear the dunk from above and tracer paying the price the cavalry coming in too hot with that flank and got steamrolled over by a bunch of tanks so now we have Tithel still soaking on up to get to 10. White Walker's running away with this game so far. We're looking at one kills of four kills, 10 to nine. They also have the camp. They're getting really ballsy now. They're going to take the siege camp. This is hella ballsy. They also know exactly where they are between Richard Gear and French being in the bot lane. They have nothing to fear. Avatar being popped right now. We do have a Ring of Frost available. And the Cleansing Flame was chosen. Lots of damage onto House. There they go. The Ring of Frost will connect and say goodbye to the old man. He was put in hospice and taken out almost immediately. So a three for one for White Walkers. The undead are angry and they are smashing some Lannisters right now. White Walkers really, really making some good, good moves here. Their macro play compared to the last game has already improved dramatically. Their ballsiness in risk versus reward, exceptionally good. Willing to go for high risk, high reward plays. This is what it takes to be a top tier team and not just a team that occasionally wins. Now, they're getting the point to begin with. Alex Straza, I believe. I will, I can actually check. Alex Straza, Alex Straza, let me check on you. Uh, I can't get the frames here. She is eight. Alex Straza does have the dragon available, so she can pop on out at any given time. So. Alex Raza has it. Peter getting pulled on back in. They're trying to take him out. The stun. The sleep coming on out. Say goodbye to no one. Everyone is still standing. Aless going ham with that wrath of the berserker. Peter popping the iron skin just in time in the dunk hitting two members. And it will help secure the kill on Hollis. Hollis is getting torn apart in these team fights. Not able to stay up even with the avatar they just have too much damage that they're pumping on out here i mean take a look at these damage numbers we have 20k 24k 24k decker kane has healed 26k worth of damage at this point 38k for alex straza and on the other side tracer and kelthos are doing their best to keep up but I mean, we're, we're looking at almost another 10k healing and another 10k damage being pumped out by White Walkers. So Pride Start Gaming is definitely overstepping. They're, they're continuing to, uh, to believe they can take these fights, but they have yet to be able to successfully take these fights. If they're going to win, they're going to have to either start giving up and soaking and hope for their late game, or they're going to have to change up their fight dynamic significantly. Obviously, they spent a ton of resources to kill Johanna. They weren't able to successfully do so, and that has netted them uh, quite a big deficit at this point. They're only going to be able to take down some towers here at this point with the protector, but it does open up the keep for potentially, you know, the next objective because they already got the bottom fort. They haven't taken the mid fort, which is uh, kind of untraditional, but it works. Alas getting taken on out. There comes Stale a while, listen, but it doesn't work on the protector and Richard Gear is taking a ton of damage. He will manage to survive. The protector going get down just in time. The pull onto Jaina and Jaina's in no man's land, sending her to an icy grave. Oh my god! Alas coming in with the big boy spear and that poison spear boys and girls is how you kill a tracer let's put it on a clinic of some sonia play here 
So Ring of Frost is still available because Jaina went down so quickly. Uh, we still have the bomb available because Skigum went down so quickly. Now, we still have Phoenix available. Still, Wild and Listen is about to come back up. But man, 16 versus 14 very, very shortly. If we take a look at those damage numbers again. We're now at 34k for Asmodin, and it's just going to keep going up and up. He is at 248 stacks, and as you can see, he's completed the quest, which is going to allow him to do even more damage. At this point, though, Price Art Gaming has gotten themselves the ability to pick up a crucial support camp. Now, it's not the end of the world. 16 versus 14, it shouldn't really matter if they have the support camp healing. And they're looking for the Dahaka. He has nowhere to run right now. They do have Blessed Chill. Blessed Chill going to be used. Alech just needs to hold the stun to make sure he cannot burrow on out of here. He's trying to get on out. There's the stun. There's the burrow. The condemning time. And the dinosaur has been put out of his misery. Barney is feeling bad for his people right now. With this 16 advantage... The wave and the siege camp they are going to 100 percent pressure this keep or at least i would 100 percent pressure this keep you have lots and lots to walk in there with full wave double siege camp literally nothing for you to be concerned about so they're going to take this really easy real easy they take it they walk away they they are starting the beginning of the end for pride start gaming now, I, oh. I'm starting up an oh, someone popped on in. Uh, I was still on Discord and didn't even realize it. All right, so Fort going down now. The XP battle, they're taking down another, well, and at this point, Pride Star Gaming has no tools to use for the Objective C in terms of they have nowhere to retreat to. They have no well available. They have everything on the side of White Walkers right now. So they are going to come in and fight for this 100%. They know their situation, that this is the best fight they're going to have. And if they give up this objective... There goes Peter coming on in with a oh, big damage onto Richard Gear, but Claus has nowhere to go. Skigum all up in the booty of Asmodin. Going to take he's not gonna take him out. French is down in the meantime. Richard Gear taking a lot of damage. The Ring of Frost coming on out, hitting two. Death from above and say goodbye to two members of Pride Star Gaming. Tithle really low, trying to battle with the treadmill. Skigum trying his best. We'll be able to get out of there. The bomb is not gonna meet its mark. But it is a two for one. Pride Star Gaming has to worry about multiple things now. They are going to lose the protector. There's three catapults in the top lane that they have to clear. And they're down an additional member. And they're also down for, you know, the race to 20. Asmodin is now at 301 stacks. And, well, he still has another 99 to go. And if you thought his damage was high before, it just keeps getting higher. At this point, this is almost assuredly a keep. There is no one else in here. I don't know why no one else is in here at this point. Uh, they don't want to be down fully in numbers, so it sort of makes sense here. But they're losing a lot of value out of this. Skagen coming on in. Does have his bomb available, can drop it at any point. Johanna is the only one in there, and we should be able to get someone like Jurassic in here quite shortly. Remember, you do a lot more damage with someone else inside of that protector. And so you want to get someone in there ASAP. Uh, they still have yet to get anyone in here. Mm, this is interesting. White Walkers, though, getting some bombs dropped, some dunking, stay a while and listen, not going to do much. Alas, getting pulled on back really, really deep, however, and she will still be perfectly fine, Sonia. We do have Jurassic now in tow inside of the protector, and they will back on off. A slightly strange use of this protector, as they didn't wait for Jaina, 
Oh, Skium taking a ton of damage. We'll recall back. Stuck on the treadmill. And they have rooted on down Hollis right now. So trading tanks. Tank number one going on down. Peter leading the charge. Staying on in. Oh, let's get the spear. Ring of Frost going to connect against French. French is just staying it put in place. And obviously, it didn't do so hot in French class as Jurassic is going to call his mom. Now, Keep is certainly going to be going down here. Now, Peter is still going super ham. He is rather low. Does have the iron skin available. We'll pop that right now. Oh, let's go in on in deep. Does have the pull, the mystical spear, and we'll just be able to spin to win on out. French getting chunked down once again from Claws, and there goes the laser on to Tithel, and it should be potential for game here. Skigum is going to have to try his best to get a nice bomb. Have to juke and jive and show him the moves. 60% on the core and falling. There are three cat four catapults on the core. And they are quickly going to take out this keep. Sorry, this core themselves. It is falling. Nine. Six. Six percent. And they are going to finish this White Walkers. Oh boy. Oh boy. Where do we begin? I have to I have to say sorry to White Walkers. I thought your draft was a late game draft and you guys weren't going to get there. Instead, you guys dominated every aspect of this game. 4 kills to 14. We had 82,000 to 56,000 and we had 66,000 to 51,000 damage for in comparison Asmodin dunking them donuts because white walkers run on Duncan now Skigum trying his heart out but it didn't matter Skigum got annihilated as much as Murd in that game and as someone else pointed out Malfurion is probably the better pick or Tracer. Tracer basically has nearly a full heal with the regrowth. Can go on in, walk on back, and essentially has free healing. In the meantime, Deckard has to choose between trying to heal Hollis and heal Tracer. And can't choose both targets. So while they've been splitting their damage between Asmodin's AoE damage. And Alette's just like tearing through the back line like a blender. Well... Didn't work out too hot for him that game. So the big W going to the the W double W's of the White Walkers. So sit on tight and we will be back with game number two. Sorry, the collapse is coming.